Hi everyone, hope you're all well. Um, my name's Isla, for those of you that don't know me, um, and I run Brit Yarn, which is an online yarn shop which specialises and only sells in British wool. Um, so as you can see, we're back in the dining room again. It just works better, there's just more space to be fair, um, and I can sort of spread out on, on either side of me. Um, so yeah, so I hope you are all well. Um, the weather at the moment, I just don't know what I'm doing at the moment with my winter woolies. Um, last week, definitely a bit of a chill in the air. Over the weekend, Monday, Tuesday, really mild. Today, temperature's gone down a little bit more. So um, yeah, I hope it's okay where you are. I think uh, the top of Scotland's going to get some um, pretty strong winds tonight. So I hope, I hope all is well up there. Um, so, so yeah, um, just to let you know, um, obviously you can find um, Brit Yarn on the website, it's www.brityarn.co.uk, that's the shop, we've got a blog um, which you can find at the bottom of the website, um, we're also on Twitter, Instagram as Brit Yarn, Pinterest, although I have to be honest, I don't, I don't really get Pinterest, I understand how it works, but um, yeah, Pinterest isn't one of my go-to places, but I do post on there, and if I find something, you know, an interesting picture, or if there's an interesting tutorial or anything like that, then I do try and post, um, you know, pin them on there as well. Um, Periscope, which I do occasionally, on there is Brit Yarn, and of course we've got our amazing and wonderful Ravelry group. Um, if you're interested in British wool, if you're interested in, um, I'm guessing you are interested in British wool, because otherwise you wouldn't Probably be watching this, um, but if you haven't, if you're not a member already, please come over and join the group. Um, seriously, there are a lovely bunch of people there. Um, we finished um, on Sunday. It was the Cal and the Great British Socks Along Cal, and that's been brilliant. We've had a really good time, and the threads for that are going to stay open even though the Cal's finished because there was so much like just really helpful chatting and stuff. I think I mentioned it last time actually. So yeah, so if you haven't done already, come and join the Ravelry group. We've had a couple of knit-alongs so far held on there. Um, and there's, you know, if you want help and advice, what to buy, um, or maybe if you bought something, you know, maybe you've been to a yarn festival or you've been on your travels and you've seen, um, you know, a shop somewhere that's been selling British wool, then yeah, let us know. It's not just about what you buy from, from Brit Yarn. Um, it's also about what you're up to, what you're knitting in British wool whether that's from, you know, from myself or from, or from other people. So come and share, come and share the love and knowledge. So I've got my notes, so that's why I look down. Um, so I apologise if that bugs anybody. Um, so yeah, I thought what we'll do today, talk about some Brit Yarn news. Um, of course, we've always got new stuff happening at Brit Yarn. And talk about fish objects, which might have noticed. Um, jump hand stuff, um, which is my whips, and um, yeah, just a little bit, I suppose, about what I've been up to over the last last few days, uh, last few weeks, should I say. Um, also, just going back to the Ravelry thread, I have put in there um, a message. Um, if you have got any questions you want to answer on the podcast, then just pop a little note in there, um, and you know, I'll see if I can answer them for you. Um, so I have some tea today, I've got it in my head hand chain mug, this was a TK Maxx purchase. Um, and it is lemon and ginger today, so um, I don't normally drink herbal tea during the day, but I just felt I needed a bit of a, a, a bit of a something, you know when you feel a bit like, I don't know, like not really coldy, but I'm just a bit, so I thought a little bit of, yeah, I've scored myself probably, a little bit of lemon and ginger just to, um, Give me a kick. So, um, you've probably seen, if you follow me on social media or if you have signed up to our newsletter, um, West Yorkshire Spinners have recently released some new shades in their Signature 4-ply range. Um, and Signature 4-ply, loads of people use it for socks, and I've used it myself for socks. Um, but it's not just good for socks, it's good for well, pretty much anything. It's definitely a go-to for ply yarn. Um, I've seen a really nice um, colour work hats done it. Um, I've seen shawls, I've seen gloves. So I don't just think of socks when you when I show you these yarns. So what West Yorkshire Spinners have is they have, um, I suppose, three colour ranges in their, um, colour ranges? Three ranges in their colours. Does that make sense? I'm not sure. Um, 
Now when you go on Brit Yarn Shop, you'll just see two options. You've either got the birds range, um, and then I've lumped all the stylish colours together because I thought that gets a bit confusing otherwise. Um, but they have the country birds range and they also have what they call the sweet shop colourways and they have the spice colourways. And what they fetched out um, last week I think it was, um, they fetched out three new bird shades and um, six, yeah, to do my maths then, six um, solid colourways in a mixture of spice and sweet. Um, but like I say, if you go on the website, on Brit Yarn's website, it is all, all the solid colours are just under one, one heading because it gets a bit confusing otherwise and a bit cluttered. So I thought I would show you them. Um, this is going to test my memory because like I said, they are all new colourways um, and the West Yorkshire Spinners only have their shade number on the back. So I have to kind of, um, yeah, think. So the first one I'm going to show you, if I don't drop them all. Oops, <laughs> they're, they're my notes. I say really good notes. <laughs> um, so the first up is these ones. I can't hold them properly. Um, so that's the first. Um, and what the West Yorkshire Spinners do, if you're not familiar, is they have um, their birds range and um, not all the solid shades, but quite a lot of the solid shades are dyed in the same colour as the colours in the prints. So this is Goldfinch. And to go with Goldfinch, you've got Cherry Drop. I was going to call it Cherry Bomb. Um, cherry Drop, for those of you who might know, it is the same shade as the one that goes with Holly Berries. So if you've bought Holly Berries, um, which is their Christmas Limited Edition one, and Cherry Drop, and you've got some Cherry Drop left, then that's the one, sort of the bird's print that goes with it. So you've got that, Cherry Bomb, and... Cinnamon stick. So that's those ones. Next up is oh, which over? Let's see if I can get hold of them properly. See them? Okay, so these ones then you have got Kingfisher and then you have got turmeric and you've got Spearmint. I'll just show you those with the to make it easier. So that's your kingfisher and um, turmeric. And then you've got your kingfisher and spearmint. There you go. And then last up, and I have to say I think these last ones are probably my favourite. Um if that's if that's okay. <laughs> Don't tell the people at West Yorkshire Spinners that I've got favourites, gosh. Um, so th these ones, um, I think the, the colours are slightly more muted. Um, certainly not pastel or anything like that, but they're not kind of, you know, the other shades aren't like a vivid kick up the bump, should we say. But these ones, I think, are. So here then, you've got Peacock, which is your bird. Not necessarily country birds, but, um, you know, peacocks do live in... Grounds of country houses, I suppose. So you've got the peacock, you have got a spearmint lime, which greens never come up right on um, on the screens. Um, and the spearmint lime, you have to just trust me, it's a really lovely, rich green. It's looking a little bit washed out there, perhaps. And then you have got blue raspberry, which is a stunning turquoise shade. And I'll just show you those individually. See me peeking there. <laughs> so that's the um, chocolate lime and the peacock and the blue raspberry with the um, with the peacock. And I'll tell you what I do like. Um, and I don't know if I've noticed it on the other birds shades. I need to maybe have a look. But I don't know how well you can make this out. Um, on the other bird shades, I thought that the bits that are um, you know, the bits that aren't solid colours, so they're white and grey and all the other bird shades. But on the peacock and on the kingfisher, instead of it being white and grey, they're white and a blue. 
Now, like I say, maybe that's the same in all the other ones, but it's the first time I've actually noticed that. That one. Well, I'll let you know. <laughs> so that's them. They're all in the shop now. They're seeming extremely popular, which is brilliant. Um, we've also got. Liz might bark in a minute. I apologise if she does. I think the postman might be about. Um, we've also got, um, and I said this last time, and I think it's sold out by the time YouTube had actually uploaded it onto um, onto um, the website, onto YouTube. Um, we've also got a few balls left of holly berries. Um, I probably won't be getting any more in after this batch. Um, we've had quite a lot in. Um, and what I don't want to do is get more in and then... Um, I don't know, it doesn't sell, you've all had your, you've all had your fill of holly berries, um, and obviously with it being Christmassy, um, I don't want to sort of, yeah, don't want to get too much in, so once this is gone, this will probably be the last that I will, that I'll get in, um, but it's proved extremely popular, um, I just noticed there's a something, <laughs> I can see, I don't know if you can see, I don't know, it's obviously reflection, I think it's because I've got in the dining, in the lounge, a mirrored ball? I don't, I don't know where that's coming from. That's a bit weird. Sorry. Um, what was I saying? Holly berries and... Won't we get any more in probably after this is gone? Yeah. Um, there's some really nice things I've seen. A lot of people have obviously been knitting, been knitting Christmas socks. There was one lady in my Ravelry group... And I don't mention names if that's okay because I don't, you know, want to break any kind of... You know, not really confidentiality, but, you know, I just don't... So if, when I say it's not because I'm being vague, it's just because, you know, I haven't got people's permission to, um, you know, to talk about them. Um, but there was one lady in the Ravelry group, and um, she had a brilliant idea of using holly berries, but for um, little socks, and doing them as um, Christmas bunting, which I thought was a really cool idea. And then there was another lady on Instagram, she um, tagged me on one of the pictures that she'd done, and she'd done holly berries, but in a really simple, just a garter cowl. Um, so again, you know, it doesn't have to be for socks. Um, so yeah, that was, um, yeah. And I've got, I have to say, I have got myself a ball, and I can't decide, I'm really undecided. And if I don't make my mind up soon, then Christmas is going to be long gone. Um, but I can't decide between doing some socks. Um, and I've got a bit of yarn left over um, from this. Um, for my top and that's obviously it's in a green colour although it's looking probably a bit weird here today um, and it does like work really well with the holly berries so I can't decide whether to do some socks um, and I'd probably do maybe Claire Divine slit no I wouldn't I'll do pletch um, I'm doing slip now um, I'd probably do that in the socks um, and then maybe use the green for the heels and toes or maybe to do like a sock head hat. Um, I've not done one before, but obviously I've seen loads on Instagram and quite a lot of other podcasters have been knitting them. Um, so I can't, yeah, um, yeah, I'm undecided. But like I say, if I don't decide soon, then oh well, there's not really much point, is there? So, um, so yeah, I would love to see what you guys have been making with them. Please, um, yeah, please, sort of, you know, share them in the Ravelry group, in the Whips and a Bow thread. Um, that would be that pretty cool. So finally then, um, that was a bit of a tangent there with Hollyberry, and um, the last new thing I really want to show you is this. Now this I am delighted to have in stock. This is 100% Lincoln Long Wool. Um, and for those of you who've been watching the podcast um, and you know following me elsewhere, you'll know that I've been knitting Kerry Westerman's Mayhe Shawl. Um, in the lace weight of this yarn. Um, now I met these sheep. These these um, long uh, ah, speak Lincoln Longwell are my home county's um, traditional breed of sheep. Um, so a that was you know one of the reasons why I wanted to stock it. Um, but when I went to the Lincolnshire show this year, um, I was looking around the sheep pens, um, and I came across um, a store selling. Lincoln Long Wool from the Risby flock. Um, didn't expect to buy wool when I went to the Lincolnshire show, and I blogged about it actually, so if you want to look on the blog, you can do. Um, but yeah, I didn't expect to buy wool and saw um, they'd got some yarn for sale. Um, there was also selling um, sort of the fibre as well, if you wanted to spin it. So I bought some lace weights and um, I really enjoyed and um, really enjoyed knitting with it. 
Um, not blocked mine yet. My, my hair's still on the needles, as you'll see. I'll see in a minute. It's not really moved on since the last time I podcasted. Um, but anyway, I made inquiries. Um, I got in touch with them um, a little while ago to see if um, it'd be possible to stock um, this yarn. Um, it ticked. No, that sounds really horrible. Actually, it did tick a lot of boxes for me, and that sounds quite. Uh, doesn't sound very friendly, that does it? Um, but one of the reasons why I really wanted to stop this is, um, like I say, it's my home county sheep. I was knitting Mayhe with it, um, and I do try and knit with everything that I get in. Um, so I knew what it was like to knit with. It's. The sheep live not a million miles away. The sheep, like I said, they're all from the same flock, and that's something I want to take but yarn in that direction of stocking um, single flock yarn as well as you know the more commercial things you know like this. Um, and they live um, the flock are all based at Market Raisin, which isn't a million miles, but it takes a bit of time to get there. But only because the roads don't go straight, if you know what I mean. Um, but in terms of, you know, as the crow flies, um, market raising isn't that far away from where Brit Yarn is. Um, and I was also, when I was looking into the yarn, really, really, really surprised to find out that it was spun near Ghoul. Um, and Ghoul, again, is um, in the opposite direction to market raising, but it's kind of near, even closer to where I live than, um, than market raising. And I was... Um, yeah, I was really shocked, I have to say. Um, generally really shocked and surprised that there was... It's only a really small spinning mill, I think, by all accounts. Um, but yeah, it's spun, spun at goal. So you never know what is literally on your doorstep. Um, so that's quite, that was quite cool. Um, so anyway, yeah, I managed to stock it. Um, it is quite difficult stocking flock, single flock yarns um, directly from the farmers. Um, purely because it costs them so much money to get the yarn, um, the fleeces spun. Um, and I was chatting with um, the people from Risby Flock about this um, and about just the general um, difficulties, I suppose, of um, you know producing, you know, producing yarn from from the fleece. And I know Rachel Atkinson was doing some blog posts about. Um, and again, you'd have seen it if you read the Independent, but about the price that the farmers receive from the Wool Marketing Board um, for their fleeces. Um, obviously, Risby Flock, they're a pedigree flock, so um, and their Lincoln Longwall is a it's on the Rare Breed Survival Trust. Um, I think it's on the watch list. I can't remember now without double checking, I really should have known this. Um, so obviously they they don't have to sell it to the wool board and they don't they obviously keep the fleeces themselves um, and then source spinning mills to spin it for them. Um, so yeah, so this is in the shop now. This is um, we've got two weights. There's DK um, and then there's the lace weight which I'm knitting my he in. Um, and it's, I'm delighted to say because I know it's quite um, it's it's very hard buying things off the internet when you don't know what they're like. But I have to say, I'm really happy to see that quite a lot of this is sold already. Um, and providing they keep um, getting their fleeces spun, I'll always have it in stock. Um, because it does mean a lot to me um, in terms of, you know, I am a yellow belly. I was born in Lincoln. Um, so I am a, a proper Lincoln yellow belly is what they call, they call people from Lincoln in Lincolnshire. Um, and so, yeah, to have this is, is pretty special. Um, and like I say, it's a direction I am taking Brit Yarn in, um, and I will keep adding bits and bobs as and when I can, um, you know, of similar similar things, of pure breed yarn um, that is from single single flocks. So yeah, Lincoln Longwell, go, go grab yourself. Um, also, um, I also got posted on Avery about um, if people preferred uh, what weight in terms of 50 grams or 100 grams, um, you know, for yarns that maybe they weren't familiar with, and there was a bit of a, it was a bit of a discussion, and there was a bit of a mixture. To be fair, some people said, you know, if, if you're doing things like um, the Knit British Breeds Watch Along, then fifty grams is fine because you can get, you know, buy some, do your swatch, have a bit left over maybe, um, and then go back to it, purchase more if 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 you wanted to. Other people said they just preferred hundred grams because it gave them a bit more to play with. Um, so, like I said, this is in 100 grams. I um, will be swatching with some other yarn from um, another flock. Um, I'm hoping to get on the needles tonight. I bought it up last night. Um, and um, 
I can't see why I wouldn't sock this next one um, because I'm really, really impressed with, with the yarn so far just in terms of handball everything. Um, and that's, it's, it's, yeah, got lots of brownie points. Um, but that would be in 100 gram skeins because that's all the day. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much for your feedback there. And um, I think I'll probably just try and do a mixture. If ever there's an option, then um, I'll look at what I've done before and then go for, go for the other. So, yeah, and then come along. Okay, so finished objects. Um, as you can see, I am wearing my um, Talavera top. Um, it's something I've been working on for a little while, as, as many of you all know. It's a design by um, Amanda Collins, who is also Owl Print Panda. And it appeared in the summer issue of Pom Pom Magazine. Um, so that is it. I'll show you, I'll try and stand up, I try not to squeak the chair too much. So the green isn't, the green is actually really quite a vibrant green. I sort of try and chest that over again. That's quite good actually. It, it's it's still not that green. It's it's much greener in real life. But like I say, trying to photograph this top has been a nightmare. Um, but that gives you a, that gives you some idea. A minute or two ago. No, never mind. Um, so yeah, so um, the yarn is Eden Cottage Yarns BFL Sock, which is what we um, Brit Yarn Stocks. Um, I think this colorway was large, but it, this is for my own stash. I have, I've had this in my stash for a while. Um, I did the size medium in the end. I started on the small, um, which was I think size one. I was just really concerned. I know it's lace, so lace stretches and stuff, but I was really concerned. I wanted it to have a bit of I didn't want it to be hugging too much. So I ripped it out, did the second size, um, but I also was doing it on um, slightly smaller needles. I think I was doing on 3.75 needles rather than four. I think the pattern called for, um, because I it was just too gappy on these solid bits. I wanted them to be a bit more closed. Um, so yeah, so um, really pleased with it. Um, I finished it a couple of nights ago. Um, you probably saw my picture of it. Um, before blocking and um, yeah really and actually really happy with it um, it's the same front and back so there wasn't a right or wrong way um, so it's yeah I'm very happy I'm gonna try and see if Mr Brit Yarn will take some pictures of me wearing it at the weekend and um, if, if possible so watch out watch out <laughs> My other finished object, um, I think I might have shown you this last time, but this is now classified as finished, is just my Jacob Breed Swatch Along, which I've been doing as part of the Knit British um, Swatch Along Cal. So I've given this two washes, two blocks, two wears now, um, and I've written up all my notes and I've plate, plate, put a picture in um, the Knit British thread as well. So um, yeah, this was really interesting actually. It's um, it did change slightly after the second wash, um, and after the second wear. Um, and again, like I said, I put all my notes on. And, it was, and what was really interesting actually, because I I think this is soft. Um, and I know from um, obviously Jacob Yarn, Mr. Ocean Spinners Jacob Yarn is Brit Yarn's Yarn of the Month. Um, so there's a blog post on that out at the moment. Um, and on that post, I got three um, friends of Brit Yarn who have recently knitted cardigans in Jacob just to write a few words of what their thoughts were. So that was really interesting in terms of different people's, um, you know, general observations and how, you know, what if they thought it was soft because they weren't next to all to their skin. Um, so, yeah, definitely go and check that blog post out. Um, but what was really interesting is that I said, and I, I could wear this next to my skin, I basically had wore this with the wrong side towards my skin, like that, which is how you'd wear it if it was a jumper. Um, and on both times I wore it all day and didn't notice it. Gave it to Mr Brit Yarn after its first wash and block and he said he couldn't wear it next to his skin. It would, it would irritate him too much. Um, but yeah, you know, he'd be able to wear it if he had a long sleeve t-shirt on or something, but you know, he would need a, a thin layer on underneath. 
Um, so that was interesting, had, the, had a discussion about that. Washed it again, blocked it again, I wore it again, and um, again passed it back to Mr. Brittian and said, what do you think? And he was still of the opinion that for him, he couldn't wear it next to his skin. But last weekend, um, we had a good friend of ours over who isn't a knitter, she, she doesn't knit. Um, but as a general interest, I would say, in um, you know, in what I'm doing and things. Um, and I gave it to her and I was like, what do you think? And she was like, oh, it's really soft. Okay. And then we had a neighbour's little boy over and um, I said to him, you know, and obviously you always get the truth from kids, don't you? You can guarantee it. So I said to him, what, what do you think? And he was like, yeah, it's soft. So, um, yeah, I definitely think with Jacob, I think if you are maybe um, really sensitive, then you probably would need a bracelet, but, you know, it's worth a try, I have to say, because it's, it's excellent value for money, and it knits up brilliantly. If I can show you. So there we go. So that's that. Um, so what's in the jam pan? Um, and for those, if it's your first time of watching, um, the jam pan is a jam pan. It's also no whips. I've got it next door to me. So if you don't want it, I want to show you it just so you can see what I mean. It's kind of heavy, but that's my jam pan. <laughs> so now you know, <laughs> um, and that's why I keep all my whips. So some of these you've seen before, um, like I said, I've got my Mayhe shawl by Kerry Westerman, which I'm knitting in the Lincoln Long Wall. And I haven't done anything on more on this since last time. Um, and that's because I've got to the second chart, which isn't difficult, but just requires a bit more thought. Um, and I just haven't had the opportunity to um, have some time to sit and work on it. But like I said, this is in the Lincoln Long Wall that we now stock. Um, and um, yeah, there's not really much more to say on that because, like I say, it's not moved on since my last podcast. Um, and so some of that is because I am knitting Mr. Britty on some socks for Christmas. Um, so I'm not going to show you the socks um, because he does sometimes watch. But he knows he's getting socks, so that's not, not a surprise. Um... So yeah, so obviously in the times when he's not here, because um, he's often um, away and doing bits and bobs, then I've been knitting on his socks rather than having the time to knit on my shawl. So something new to show you. This is... I don't know how well I can show you this. But this is Claire Devine's um, Oolong. Hat. I hope I pronounced that right, that'd be good. It's O double O L O N G, it's like the T. Um, but this is one of um, Claire's new designs in the T collection. And again, the colour's not coming up quite true. Um, never mind. Um, so, yeah, so um, it's in her T, her new, um, or her new and updated T collection. Um, and Claire is doing a little cal over in her Ravelry group, Claire Devine. Um, and I wanted a project for um, some club knitting. And I thought, hat, perfect. But I couldn't decide which one of the tea collection hats to cast on. I'd all, I've already done Lapsang. And I've done the cow to match Lapsang as well. And I was just like, I was there, honestly, backwards and forwards. Um, because I've got, I've got the, the actual pattern of the ebook. And just kind of going, oh, I don't know which one to do. And in the end, I just had to say, you know what, Isla, stop. Top of the list, I've done Lapsang. What's the next one that comes after Lapsang? And it was this one. <laughs> so, um, but some lovely hats in there. Um, and there were um, three different sizes, I think, for the hats. Um, and lots of hats that would be great for Christmas gifts. They're not all feminine girly hats or anything like that. Um, there's a really nice, nice selection. So, so yeah, this is mine. Uh, this is Oolong. Um, it's a mixture of... Oops, I'm going to show you. It's a mixture of lace and cables. And, um, yeah, really enjoying it. The yarn is... Um, it hasn't got a name. <laughs> bless it um, but I bought this yarn when I was volunteering at the Yarn in the City Marketplace um, and I got chatting to um, 
I'm sure it's Helen as a first name. I'm sure it's Helen. I hope it's Helen. Um, but Helen, if it is Helen, um, is from the wool kitchen. And she dies, um, hand dyes her own yarn in her kitchen, hence the name. Um, she's got some really lovely um, yarns on display. Um, some of them was on British bases, which I was delighted to see. Um, so she got a big high five for that. Um, but what she did have was um, a saucepan um, just on the floor. Um, and they were like her, like, didn't quite make it schemes. Um, and I picked up this one. It's a British BFL. Um, so it's no, it's got no name. Um, like I say, she dyed it for whatever reason, just didn't didn't meet Helen's, um, you know, Helen's criteria or whatever. Um, but I really liked it because it's a, and it's a, the colours aren't, it's not that blue. Um, but I, I really liked it. Um, just over 100 grams, I think, then she did have, she did say she'd got enough to make a jumper. And I was like, oh, yeah. No, no, <laughs> um, but I bought this one because um, I thought it was really nice colours and I, yeah, I liked it and I, I didn't like to see these skeins sitting in the saucepan um, because they, they didn't quite make it um, and there's nothing wrong with them, it's just the fact that I think Helen just didn't, just didn't like the colours, um, but I loved it, I fell in love with this one um, and I also bought, um, she'd done some Wednesday day off um, and that was like greys and pinks so I got one of those, but that was for Ply the Wednesday Dale. So yeah, so I've just done the first repeat. Um, I completely and utterly made a muck up of the cast on and the rib. Um, so yeah, I um, I cast on, um, and I'm slightly going to jump subjects now, um, but it kind of... No, I won't. Um, no, I'll show you one more bit and then I'll talk about that again. Now I haven't shown you this next bit um, because actually it's been up in up in the bit yarn and I just haven't I don't know why I've left it up there actually. But this is um Kate Atherley's Lemon Difficult Shawl. Um and um this was very kindly offered up by Kate the design. Um she wanted a few people to knit it up in different colourways. Um and she also wanted people who had not done brioche before to give it a go. So I, that ticked, that ticked my boxes because I'd never done brioche before. Um, and so yeah, so I cast it on. Um, and yeah, I actually really enjoyed working on it. I just don't work on it very often, unfortunately. Um, I'll see if I can show you. Well, I can't show you because I've not got the pattern. Um, basically, Kate's um, version of it is using... Um, I think it was a black yarn, but with then like an absolute crazily nuts, rainbowy, everything going off um, yarn to kind of calm it down a little bit. So, but I've done mine in a well. It's the the cream is one from Blacker Blacker Yarns, and it's their Elegance. And I won it um, last year as a prize for the Lush Pod Cow that I took part in. So um, that's what the cream one is, and then the black one. Um, is from my stash, it's a bit tangled, um, and I can't pronounce the names, it's something like Scop and Roll, definitely not British, I'm afraid, um, but you know, it was in my stash, I, you know, it's been there a while, it needs using, but I thought this, with, oops, that, would actually work really well, because the cream will always break up, the actual, sort of different and you can see it's slightly changing colour now. Started up being quite grey, it's gone black. So um so yeah so I'm I do really enjoy it working on this. Um like I said it's my first brioche attempt and if you have to do a, a sort of a, a first brioche pattern um definitely recommend Lemon Difficult by Kate Atherley. It's not difficult at all. Um, I suppose that's what the name is. I think there's just a perception that brioche is actually really difficult. Um, but it's but it's not. It's you know it requires a little bit of thought until you. But that's, that's the same for like anything new, isn't it? Um, whether that be cables, lace, doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Um, and um, I would love to um to get it finished by next February, the same time as my making sure. Um, because Kate Athel is also going to Jolie's Kitchens Retreat. Um, so it'd be quite nice to actually have both of those finished because both Kate and Carrie. 
um, are doing courses on the retreat. So it'd be quite a nice thing to have done. So I was talking about that. Um, um, basically, um, over the last few weeks, um, we've been going doing a few bits and at Bob's out and about. Um, and a few weekends ago, we went to York for the weekend. We stayed in our camper, camper van. And the reason I went to York is because some um, a couple of knitting ladies that I met, um, well, I met one of them at Lee John Festival, um, got on really, really well, and um, then met her again at Yarndale with another lady, um, the lady who does um, Phileas Yarns, and I Yarn. Um, and they, the two of them, obviously, as part of the Scully Along meetup, they'd obviously got got chatting, um, which was really nice. And um, we both were, you know, they were both kind of northern northern ladies, should we say? Um, and they thought it'd be a really good idea, maybe if just a few of us got together. So, um, so yes, we met in a pub in York. Um, so that's why we stayed in York. And I was like, I need something to knit because the only thing I'd got on my needles was this, which I didn't really want to knit while in the pub because it's 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 not difficult lace but it just requires a little bit of concentration um and i had my mehi shawl which is not a it's not for me anyway not pub knitting um so i thought I'd cast on cast on a hat so i cast on on the friday night um and first of all i got the cast on wrong because i didn't need leave enough longer end for the cast on so i had to then rip it out start again and then I couldn't get the rib right. I just could not get this ribbing right because it wasn't like your normal two by two ribbing. Um, but I just couldn't get it right. But I, well, so I'm really sorry, Claire. I couldn't be bothered to rip it out again. <laughs> so um, I have got a few little iffy bits on my ribbing where I'd obviously, yeah, made a bit of a bodge. Um, but it's just one of these things. My brain just couldn't process what the instructions were saying to me. And I think all I needed to do was count up to three, but it just just wasn't sinking in. Um, but anyway, I had a really lovely afternoon. It was really foggy, really, really, really foggy. Um, and um, But yeah, I had a lovely afternoon. We had some dinner, lunch, um, a few beers. Um, and yeah, it was just a really good, good time just chatting with, you know, like-minded people, knitting and, you know, people sort of showing what they were knitting and what they, you know, maybe bought. So that was, um, yeah, that was really cool. Um, and one of the reasons why we went away that weekend was because it was my birthday on the Monday and um, I always ask for like nitty kind of things for my birthday and one of the things I asked for was a project bag um, and I, this, my mum was, sort of, was like what do you want, what do you want and I was like, I sent a couple of links and I said I'd really like a project bag um, and I sent her a link to Luli's Really shop. Um, it's a lady called Lee who runs it, and I've met Lee, she's lovely. Um, and I've always liked the look of her project bags, and they're very different to the ones that Brit Yarn sells. Um, this was, I think, this was a medium bag, um, and obviously, the ones that we sell are the Japanese knot bags, whereas this is a drawstring. So I still like them because I much prefer, I don't really like zips that much on project bags because they snag a little bit. This is a drawstring. I should have put something in it actually to show you. Um, but um, Lee does um, three or four different sizes. She does like a small, medium, large, and then I think she does a medium that's like extra deep. Um, but yeah, really, really happy with this. And this is going to have my next garment in it because it's easily big enough. Um, and it's also got like a little pocket inside as well. So yeah, very happy with that. I think I might buy more of these in the future um, because um, Lee's got an excellent taste in fabric as well. Um, and I think she's also got, if you're interested in like Christmassy bags, um, I've seen some pictures, I'm sure she's doing some Christmassy bags, so Christmassy fabrics. Um, so, yes, yeah, so that was York, my birthday, um, that was all that. Um, and then the only other thing we've been up to is we had a good friend of ours, the lady who thought that was soft. Um, good friend of ours up over the weekend and one of the things we did this is on guard um, one of the things we did was we went to Filey on the Monday and no we didn't, we went to Filey on the Friday um, and it was really, it was a really lovely day we just, just sort of went and did obviously a bit of work in the morning for Brit Yarn 
um, headed off, had fish and chips for lunch, which is always, um, it's always a bonus. And then yeah, I had a really nice walk down the beach, walked to Filey, um, and then walked all the way back to where we parked up. Um, and what was really good to see, um, obviously my extensive woolly hat collection came out um, because our friend didn't have a woolly hat, so I was like, here you go, have this one. Um, so was, that was quite, um, that was quite good. So she, um, what was she wearing? It was one of Kara Reston's designs. I can't remember what it was called now, but anyway. Um, and I had my ear warmer on that I'd done in the um, Overconite Super Chunky. Because it was kind of like, it was just really windy. Um, it wasn't particularly cold or anything like that, but it was just windy. So you just need to do something just to keep your hair from, you know, sort of flapping in your face and stuff. <laughs> right, I think that is everything for me. Um, I just a bit of a round up. Um, I announced the prizes last night for the Great British Socks Away Cal, and I've ear burned all the prize winners. So um, if you was if you did enter, then please um, please check Ravelry. Um, and the Brit Sock, um, absolutely British Brit Sock, finished at the end of October the competition, um, and the winner was Rugged Coastline. Um, and I um. Die. Joy died up, um, died that up, and that arrived last weekend, just gone, and um, all the skeins have gone. I think I ordered um, ten, um, and they've all they've all gone. I'm afraid. So um, if you got one, well done. I would love to see what you make with it. Please pop some pictures in the Ravelry group, um, because yeah, it was really pretty. It was a really, really, really pretty. And when they arrived last weekend, and I opened up the bag, I was just like, wow. This isn't, you know, you get a picture in your mind's eye, and also Joy explained how, you know, her ideas and how she was going to dye it, but you never really know, do you? You never really know um, how that's going to work, and it was, yeah, it was pretty, pretty special. <laughs> right, well, I'm going to love you all and leave you all. Thank you ever so much for watching. I look forward to chatting to you again soon. Um, and in the meantime, like I say, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and um, yeah, Ravelry, um, because that is where that is where I am pretty much all the time. <laughs> happy knitting, happy crochet, happy spinning, happy weaving. Um, until next time, take care, everybody. Bye.